Okay, so how can you measure the pressure of a gas? So a device that to measure the pressure of a gas is called, looks like manometer, uh, it's called a manometer. You can have two different types. You can have an open arm or a closed arm. Um, so what's the difference? All right, so let's say we have a tube like so, and I'm going to show you a picture of one I have in my classroom. And if we put some liquid in here, let me just show you my picture. I think my order is a little off. So there is the picture. You can see unsuspecting students not paying attention to the fact that I'm taking their picture. You could also see right there, what this is, is a, it's a, just a uh, glass tube. There's a liquid in there. I just put water in. I put a little blue food coloring in so you could see it. Right here, it's open to the air because this this is open right here this valve is in the open position so atmospheric pressure is pressing down over here well this is an open glass tube on this side so the atmosphere is also pressing on that side right there so the atmosphere is pressing down here the atmosphere is pressing down there and you can see the water level inside of the glass tube then um, is equal all right let me go back to where i was so there's my crude drawing of that all right, so let's say we could seal this side. So if we make it a little larger, I'll make it a little taller and skinnier. And we seal this side off, and we evacuate out all of the air. So essentially, we're creating a vacuum. A vacuum just means the pressure is zero. There's no air in there. So that means there's absolutely nothing pressing down on that side. And we have this side right here open to the atmosphere. So the atmosphere is pressing down on that side. Well, then obviously the only way the liquid level could go, it could be that way because there's nothing pushing on the left and the atmosphere is pressing down on the right. Essentially what you've created is called a barometer. So a barometer is also known as a closed arm manometer. Now you could use water like I did in mine, but as you can see, you know, you're going to need 40 feet. Uh, there's one in Denmark uh, built by this guy. It's considered the largest in the world. One the Guinness Book of World Records. You can see it's you know, got a hole in the roof there, you can go all the way up, and then you can come up here and you can, you know, read atmospheric pressure uh, in millimeters of water. Now, not very practical for lab to have a 40-foot instrument where you're trying to find the pressure of something. And so, instead, they use mercury because mercury is a liquid, uh, and it is 13.5 times more dense, meaning that 40-foot tower can be 13.5 times less uh, and it turns out to be about 29.92 inches of mercury if you uh, are at what is called standard atmospheric pressure. So if the atmosphere, again, is pressing on this side, you have a vacuum, meaning there's no pressure pushing, pushing back, then the mercury level will get forced up the other side, and you could read the difference. So now you could read the difference in, if it's mercury, millimeters of mercury, and that is used as a unit of pressure. All right, so here's some other pressure values. So there's that millimeters of mercury. So standard pressure will support a column of mercury about 760 millimeters high. They gave that another. They named it after Torricelli. Uh, so they gave him the honor of 760, uh, and they call it Tor. So again, just another unit of pressure. You could also just call it one atmosphere. It is also 101.3 kilopascals. So this is kilopascals that KPA. And then PSI may be familiar to some of you, your car tires. Uh, you go check the pressure, you look on the side, it tells you how many PSI, which would be pounds per square inch, another unit. All right, so let's read our problem here. So it, what is the atmospheric pressure in atmospheres and kilopascals if a column of mercury in a closed armonometer has a mercury level difference of 725 millimeters? So the pressure is 725 millimeters of mercury. We can then refer to our standard pressure values, use the mass conversion factors, and just do a little dimensional analysis. We want to know atmospheres, and we want to know kilopascals. So all we have to do is know the standard pressure for millimeters of mercury as 760 millimeters. Remember our dimensional analysis, so we can cancel millimeters. And then we want to know what it is in atmospheres. So we just use one atmosphere and 760 millimeters of mercury. So then all we have to do is to take 725 divided by 760 times 1, and we get 0.954 atmospheres. What about kilopascals? Well, we could just change this then from atmospheres to kilopascals, or we could start back at our 725 if we'd like. 
760 millimeters of mercury, 101.3 kilopascals from those standard pressure values again for kilopascals. So now we have um, 725 divided by 760 times 101.3 and we get 96.6 kilopascals. All right, so this is the kinds of problems that are pretty simple. You're just doing a converting, not a whole lot of thinking going on, just some dimensional analysis. Uh, and as long as you know these pressure values, standard pressure values, you can just use them as conversion factors. But they're not the hard problems. What about the other kind? Um, I'm just going to skip this problem. We can dangle those. All right, so there's that pressure. Again, we had it open to the atmosphere, open to the atmosphere. So the atmosphere is pressing on both sides and the mercury, or the water level in my example, uh, is equal on both sides. But what about if I could hook a syringe and I can press on this gas on this side now? So you can see what happened to the mercury, or the water, I keep saying mercury, the water level. It is now forced up the other side. But this side over here is still open to the atmosphere. So if I had another instrument where I can find atmospheric pressure, or if I could create a vacuum, you know, hook this side to my vacuum pump and pump the air out. Again, I couldn't use water. I'd need 40 feet. But uh, if we could use mercury in this, and then we could measure the difference in the height of mercury. All right, but what about now? Well, if I know the pressure the atmosphere is pressing with a certain pressure, I can then see now that the gas on this side that I've pressed on this syringe and forced the, uh, the water level up the other side, I could say the pressure of this gas on this side is greater than the pressure of the atmosphere. How much greater would be equal to the difference in the two heights in millimeters, again, in my case of water, but in a real barometer in millimeters of mercury. All right, so let me show you what about the opposite of that. What about if, now again, I have a gas connected on this side. So over here, there's a gas. The atmosphere, it's still open here, so it's still pressing down that time. This time, the pressure of the atmosphere is greater than the pressure of the gas because it's, you know, it's not a tug of war. It's uh, more like a sumo wrestling match. The atmosphere is pressing that way. The gas is pressing that way. Well, the atmosphere is winning. I can see that because the water level is, you know, forced up the other side this time. All right, so how are we going to read that in a problem? Well, I have a different picture here you can see, but um, it says it's an open arm manometer. So now that they call this an open arm manometer, it's connected to a tank of helium, um, and it says it has a mercury level 48 point or 45.8 millimeters higher in the atmospheric arm. So that would be this difference in height right there would be 45.8 millimeters of mercury. And then it gives us another piece of information. It says atmospheric pressure is 102.7. So pushing down on this side right here is 102.7 kilopascals. Pushing down over here is this gas, helium, and you can see it's winning. It's pushing the um, mercury level higher in the atmospheric arm. That's the key phrase there. Higher in the arm, in the atmospheric arm, or the arm connected to the atmosphere. That means the pressure of this gas is greater than the pressure of the atmosphere, and we're told the pressure of the atmosphere is 102.7. So I know the pressure of this gas is greater than 102.7. How much greater? Well, 45.8 millimeters greater. But I can't just add those two together to get the pressure of the gas. Why not? Well, because this is in millimeters of mercury, and this is in kilopascals. So I've figured out a few things here. I've figured out that the pressure of the gas is greater than 102.7 kilopascals, based on the picture, based on the phrase higher in the atmospheric arm. How much greater? Well, 45.8 millimeters greater. But once again, I cannot add when they're different units. So what do I do? Well, I can just convert one or the other to make them the same, add them, and then that would give me the pressure of the gas, and then I can just change it to whatever unit this particular problem asks for it in atmospheres and in torque. So let's do that. Let me change 102.7 kilopascals to millimeters of mercury. So I'm going to use that dimensional analysis. I'm going to use those standard pressure values that we talked about before. And I'm going to change them so that they're the same. This one was millimeters. I'm going to make this one millimeters. You could have made this one kilopascals, too, if you chose. All right, so I have 102.7 divided by 101.3 times 760. And I got 771. I'll round it to millimeters of mercury. 
All right, so that means standard pre or the pressure pushing, the atmospheric pressure pushing is 771 millimeters. I know that I need to add 45.8 to that because that's how much the pressure of that gas forced it on the other side. So plus 45.8, and I get an answer of 816 millimeters of mercury. So there's my answer. That's the gas pressure. It's 816 millimeters of mercury. But I need to change it to atmospheres so I can just do a dimensional analysis. 816 millimeters of mercury. There are 760 millimeters of mercury for standard pressure in one atmosphere. So divided by 760 and we get 1.07 atmospheres. So there it is. That's the pressure of the gas in atmospheres. And then I could do the same thing to change it to tor. I'll let you do that. All right, let's do one more. This is what your problem is going to look like, though, when you go to try it. You don't have any pictures. So what do you do? All right, so I have an open armenometer that has a mercury level 22.8 millimeters higher in the arm connected to the gas. So how are you going to handle that? Well, here's how I like to do it. Just draw a little tube. Put the gas on one side and the atmosphere on the other side. I always put the gas on the left just to make it the same every time. Atmosphere on the right. And then read what the problem says. It says it is a mercury level higher in the arm connected to the gas. And so it looks like that. That means the atmosphere is pressing harder than the gas is. So atmospheric pressure is greater than the pressure of the gas that we're trying to find. What is the pressure of the atmosphere? Well, it says it's 1.25 atmospheres in the next sentence. If atmospheric pressure is 1.25, what is the pressure of the gas? Well, I know that it is, whatever it is, it's less than 1.25 atmospheres. How much less? 22.8 millimeters of mercury less, according to the difference in the height of the mercury level. But again, I can't subtract those two because the units aren't the same. So this time I'll change millimeters of mercury to atmosphere. So let's do that. So 760, I'm lagging a little bit here. 760 millimeters of mercury. I am lagging terribly now. I can't even read it. Let me erase that. All right, so 760 millimeters, uh, one atmosphere. So there's our standard pressure values, again, being used as conversion factors to change units. So 22.8 divided by 760, and I get 0 0.03 atmospheres. All right, so now I got to subtract 1.25 minus 0 0.03, and I get 1.22 atmospheres. So there's my correct answer in atmospheres. But this says, what is it in KPA? So then I can just do 1.22 atmospheres in one atmosphere. 101.3 kilopascals, 1.22 times 101.3, and we get 123.5, let's just say 124 kilopascals. So there it is, that's a manometer calculation. Good luck.